Today, I'm in the west of Scotland, and this island is Elsa Craig. Now, the extremely hard blue home granite, which is unique to this island, has been used to make curling stones since the early 1700s, and even today carries such a high pedigree that only stones sourced from this island are deemed good enough to use in the Olympics. Now, the origins of curling here in Scotland can be traced back to 1511, but it's now become so popular overseas, it's played in around 45 countries. I'm going to be finding out more about this historic game later in the programme, but first, let's find out what else this area is famous for. Standing proudly some nine miles offshore in the Firth of Clyde is the iconic Scottish landmark of Elsa Craig. The rock covers over 200 acres, and geologists believe the crag was formed from an extinct volcano over 500 million years ago. Today, Elsa Craig is principally a seabird colony, home to the third largest population of gannets in Britain. With Fiona and Jackie's passion for animals, earlier in the week, we sent our wildlife enthusiasts to the old fishing port of Girvan to meet Paul Tarling from the RSPB who monitors the colourful varieties of breeds on the island. And by far the best way to appreciate the spectacular sight and sounds of the seabirds is to take to the water. This is the north side of Ailsa Craig and this is where the main colony of birds are. There's uh, 20,000 and more uh, gannets uh, up on the cliffs. All the gannets have got a six foot wingspan. Um, they really are quite amazing. Elsa Craig supports over 70,000 breeding seabirds and has been designated as a site of special scientific interest. Species include guillemots, razorbills, puffins and peregrines. So what attracts so many of these birds mm. to the island? It's uh, where the uh, Gulf Stream or North Atlantic Drift comes up from uh, out of the uh, the Gulf uh -huh. of Mexico and that, that, that drift that comes up is bringing waters and nutrient-rich waters up here and it's great for fish in this area. And this close-up experience provides a wonderful opportunity for Fiona and Jackie to exploit their artistic talents with some challenging new subject matter. The puffins in the water over here. Oh, lovely. They're very tiny. Oh, uh, gorgeous, yeah. aren't they? When they finally make their move up here, our buyers will certainly be hoping to take advantage of Scotland's many burgeoning natural habitats. But for now, it's time to return to dry land as we continue our house hunt. The island of Ilsa Craig off the west coast of Scotland is not just a sanctuary for seabirds. It also quite literally forms the bedrock of one of Scotland's national sports. It's the granite from this small island that's used to make over 70% of the world's curling stones. But there's just one company, established way back in 1851, that has the exclusive rights to manufacture Elsa curling stones. So, during the week, I visited the Ayrshire factory to meet director Donald McRae and find out more about the island's precious commodity. So, Donald, Elsa Craig produces the perfect granite to make curling stones. But what's so unique about this granite? Well, it may surprise you, there's actually two types of granite used in making the curling stone. Uh, one common green, which is for the outer cheese or the body of the stone, and that's found in the south of the island. And the other is Ailsa Craig blue hone, which is used for the running edge of the stone, and that's found at the north end of the island. I can see we've got two huge slabs of granite behind us. How many stones can you get out of a, a size this big? Uh, hard to answer that question. Maybe if I say we took off 1,800 tonnes of granite uh, over 10 years ago and we use a yield factor of five and a half completed stones each tonne. Only loose rocks can be harvested from the island as quarrying is no longer permitted. And once the rocks are transported to the factory, Diamond cutters bore through to create each stone, which is then shaped, polished and fitted with a handle. The whole process is highly specialised, with each completed stone weighing exactly 40 pounds. So, now I've done with the theory, let's see how good I am in practice. Under the guidance of Sarah Reid, who once held the title of Junior World Curling Champion. 
So we're going to just push forward slightly. Now you're going to bring your hips up. Yeah. Back slightly, and then just push off. After a demonstration from Sarah, it's time for me to have a go. In Scotland, the sport of curling dates as far back as the early 1500s. It's a game of skill and strategy rather than speed and strength. So it can be played by all ages and involves two teams sliding their stones towards a target whilst trying to knock their opponent's stones out of the way. This is looking good. You're going to take that I'm one out. I'm going to knock your stone out. Oh. Yeah, we all done. I'm, I'm not sure into the middle. <laughs> it's a really good shot. Oh, I'm pleased with that one. That's good. With origins dating back to medieval Scotland, curling is now enjoyed throughout the world and is officially recognised as a Winter Olympic sport. And I can really see the attraction. Well, I gave it my best shot, but I don't think I'm going to make the national curling squad soon, do you? 